You know what, there is actually no need for this layout that I'm going to show you here if you're going to do this on a Bridgeport mill and you have a digital readout. However, it's nice to go ahead and do the layout too because then you can proof yourself that you're, you're not really off by one full revolution or whatever if you don't have a DRO. So I will lay this out both here, I'm talking about the slots now, and on one of the ends and I'll do it on uh, the opposite end of the screw hole. And you're going to see here that a 3 8 end mill will be used to make the one slot. And I'll use that first and then a quarter inch end mill for the uh, other slot, the narrower slot. And I think you realize it would be better to use the 3 8 end mill first rather than to try to slot a real deep hole where the smaller diameter end mill like this is going to deflect and it's hard to get a straight hole. This would also be an ideal operation to do on a little horizontal mill rather than end mills. To me you get a better slot with uh, narrow end mills in that method but I do not have a horizontal bands, horizontal milling machine. And this height gauge is set for 5 16 that's .312. If you do not have height gauges, get yourself one. They sure are handy. And yet the third one here is set for half inch. And I've got one more line to put on the end. This one also at 3 8 Okay, so the layout is done for the slots. Let's step over to the milling machine and I will slap this. And remember that the one slot goes all the way through. I'll do the 3 8 first. The vise is set up in the vise on parallels. Here's my uh, Sterrett edge finder and that's half inch in diameter, 500 thousandths. Now remember I want to mill along the center line of this. So I want to find the center and I'm doing that with an edge finder. So once I touch off and I uh, get the wobble out of this, half the diameter, that is the radius of this, is 250 and the thickness of the vise is 500 so I'm going to move in 750 thousandths according to my digital readout. So here we go. Readout. In the Y axis, I guess I'll turn this off so you can hear me. I'll zero this out and move 750 thousandths. Right there and lock the table in the Y axis and I'm now on the center. This way. And I'll put the end mill in. I've got my glasses on. Looking at it from uh, this view now, remember that I need to feed down 3 eighths of an inch total for that slot. 3 eighths wide and it's 3 eighths deep. So what I like to do is to touch off, in other words just bring it down like that, touch off and now I'm zeroing out the knee dial. cranking it up 100 thousandths. So I'll take this in about three passes 
actually four passes rather than in one. That way the end mill does not deflect so much. I have an end mill so dull I'm going to change it right now. I put in a brand new Niagara cutter, what a difference that made. the table another run 100,000 snow thousands and that and this is the final seventy five thousand for a total of three seventy five in depth and I can prove that by looking at my layout line. And looking at it from this way I see that I'm right on that line. With the chips removed and the burrs removed, just using this little depth gauge, I can see that I'm exactly at 3 8 However, that can be checked with a depth mic or your dial caliper or whatever you want to, but it, uh, that's not a real critical dimension. Now I'm ready to change end mill, put the quarter inch end mill in. If you desire, you can take ever such a light pass on each side to clean it up, and I might do that if I'm in the mood here and I will climb mill if I do that just taking a thousandth or two off of each side because it is somewhat rough although it doesn't really matter because we just have a little I remember a bottom piece that slides back and forth where is it here in that slot I'm still on the center line and that's the quarter inch end mill installed also running at the same speed and uh, the drawing calls for it or actually what I need to do here is break through so it comes all the way through and that's really only about an eighth of an inch the drawing calls for taking it uh, down to the depth of 175,000 so I'll do that and uh, there is a reason for that I won't go into that refer to your drawing frequently. So, again down I come just touching off, lock the quill, and I'll raise the knee and I'll take this in about three passes. 175,000 in three passes. Remember that little end mill can deflect very easily. You know what, I'm just going to take this 25 thousandths at a time.
And I won't show all the passes because this is a bit tedious. All right, the cutter broke through on the 125 thousandth depth, as you can see. But I'm going to take it just one more uh, pass of 25 thousandths to give me a total of 150, even though the drawing said 175, but you can suit yourself on that. And now it's ready to take out and deburr. Well, I've spent about uh, 10 minutes deburring. It's not easy to deburr down here, and I did use these little needle files, and it's turning out quite nicely. But one uh, thing that dawned on me here is I wonder, after relieving the stress in here, how much that had spread. So let's take a reading. The original thickness here is uh, 997 and here if it has spread at all it's 999 so it it grew if you will by only a couple thousand so and I thought it would have been more and nothing we can do about that it's just interesting to note that Okay, now I'm ready to start on the jaw, and there's a whole page here on dimensions for the drawing. And I'm going to go by that, but with a little bit of, uh, uh, oh, my own uh, whatever on that. Because I like to make it to fit. The uh, slot here is supposed to be a quarter inch, but in fact, I think it's going to be over. No, I know it's over. I already measured it. Who am I fooling here, huh? So the slot is about 253 or so. So, this is just a tool bit here, and that's 254. I'm using that as a gauge. So 254 is what I need to make this dimension here and it calls for 250. However, you want it a little bit loose, so maybe 250 would be all right too. You don't want it to bind as it moves back and forth, but that's a good way to gauge uh, is to use tool bits or some other available. This is ground stock. This is a ground tool bit. All right, take that for what it's worth. The stock that I'm going to use for the movable jaw is this piece of one inch square given to me by David, my friend down in St. Louis area. Rather than this bigger block here, which there'll be a lot of waste and just a lot of extra cutting. Because if you look at the drawing here, you're going to see that the jaw is one inch wide and 0.875, I believe that's uh, 7 eighths, and then in the other direction here an inch. So just makes more sense to start with a piece of one inch material. So I'll start by squaring the end and cutting this to length off camera. You don't need to see that. 